thank you for your registration to this webinar. Webinar E-Health Technologies in Medical Devices, Identification of the Keys, Development Millstone, and Regulatory Constraints. I am Sophie Latzag, Sales Manager at the LNE for the healthcare business and will be the moderator. This webinar will handle with the way of implementing a strategic development plan for e-health solutions while taking into account regulatory requirements to minimize the risk. During this webinar, the following issues will be discussed. Regulatory environment applicable to the e-health technologies, development and evaluation of e-health products, main barrier in the context of the European market. The speaker is Christophe Amiel. Christophe Amiel is Senior Director, Medical Device and Digital Health, Voisin Consulting Life Science. But before I introduce Mr. Amiel and I give him the floor, I would like to briefly remind you of the activities of the LNE. And as many of you are now in the medical field, I will also briefly focus on LNE GMED activities. The National Laboratory for Testing on Metrology employs 800 people. Most of them are civil engineers and technicians based in seven locations in France and three locations outside France. Some research. 50,000 square meter laboratory space, extensive network of partners, 25 million euro, million euro investment over last five years, and 20% of budget allocated to research and development. The LNE is an essential player. It's an independent body, a state-owned enterprise appointed by the French Ministry of Industry to perform a two-fold mission protection of public safety and consumers, and provision of services to companies. It's a recognized body, notified for over 20 European directives, and approved by competent ministry, and accredited by French accreditation body, COFRAC, for calibration, test, certification of products, and certification of management systems. The ININI brings of all its expertise on technical solutions to companies, public sector and communities answering performance, competitiveness, and above all, and above all, excuse me, product safety criteria, whatever your field of activity. It's whether it's medical, consumer good, housing, energy, transport, etc. Focusing on the medical and health market, LNE offers a wide range of services going from technical and regulatory assistance, testing and product qualifications. The LNE is part of the CB scheme program, making its test reports recognized in about 50 countries. 
Devinigi may provide access to the C marking through all of the proof modes and cover all of the European directives regarding medical devices. It's an access to international market. By the new program MDSAP, it's an international program to evaluate quality management systems for medical devices, manufacturers that market their products in Australia, Brazil, Canada, the United States, and Japan. Calibration on site and training. You must shortly understand the LNE is at your service to accompany you in all of your medical device projects. Mr. Christophe Amiel, our senior director, medical device and digital health with Wevin Consulting Life Science, VCLS, under the elaboration and the implementation of regulatory strategies for medical devices and for products combined in drug substance and their operational implementation, clinical data evaluation and vigilance. Christophe is biomedical engineer and joined VCLS 10 years ago after 15 years in the med tech industry, in particular in technical, clinical and regulatory functions with leading international company in the field of the complex and innovative medical devices. Let's start the webinar now. Christophe, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Sophie. Um, thank you very much, Sophie. And um, thanks to the Jamet for the opportunity given to uh, Voice and Consultant Lab Sciences to uh, conduct this webinar together with you. Hi to everybody, and uh, thank you for joining us today for this presentation um, related to the um, very uh, disruptive and, um, and actually exciting topic of um, uh, the development and uh, registration um, under medical device status of um, e-health um, technologies uh, in Europe. Um, as actually Sophie indicated, Voice um, and Consulting Life Sciences uh, actually accompanies uh, for uh, nearly 20 years um, pharma, biotech, and obviously medtech companies in the development, uh, internationally speaking, of the um, um, e-health uh, and overall um, medtech uh, um, technologies uh, uh, abroad. And our primary mission is actually to build uh, regulatory, but also market access, uh, innovative and global uh, regulatory strategies based on um, interactions with um, regulatory authorities and uh, payers as well. Our company uh, represents, as of today, 120 um, consultants uh, localized in different uh, international offices across uh, Europe, the USA, and Asia. Talking about MedTech, our uh, group of um, um, consultants uh, actually have developed over the years uh, a very robust expertise, in particular in the field of um, medical device software and overall e-health. Uh, which is uh, obviously the topic of uh, today's webinar. So here is the agenda for um, this uh, webinar. We're going to be starting with a discussion related to the role of ELs um, in the field of medical devices, and we'll actually illustrate this uh, based on a few, um, um, a few striking examples. 
Um, we'll move afterwards um, uh, into the real free framework uh, related to ELs. Um, primarily for Europe, but also with some uh, interesting insights um, regarding uh, the U.S., uh, bearing into uh, account that uh, some of you um, obviously have a dual regulatory strategy, both for Europe and the United States as well. We'll then move uh, to the different steps of development and evaluation of uh, an EL technology. And we'll conclude this webinar with a few take-home messages that we believe of importance. So to the best of our knowledge, um, there is no so-called universal definition for what is uh, EL, and here is the one that we, we propose to you today. So we can define EL as a decentralization of healthcare and empowerment of patients and also uh, healthcare providers through the use of wireless mobile devices and the internet. There are actually numerous types of um, EL technologies currently on the market, and among them, you get um, health and wellness apps, uh, personal monitoring devices remote diagnostic tools, and uh, integrated care platforms. So what can be said is the, the fact that these um, EL platforms are actually um, composed of a very large variety of different technological elements, um, some of them being a simple app that could be downloaded from an app store and um, uh, afterwards uh, run on, on, on a basic smartphone, but others are a lot more sophisticated and actually combine a, a complete chain of uh, softwares um, with a multiple uh, medical devices that will be uh, connected to it, which will range from a, a, a actually a basic uh, apparatus, like a body weight device, for example, up to um, an drug administration system for uh, insulin, for example. So this slide intends to uh, better uh, illustrate the growing importance that this uh, EL technologies are actually taking um, among uh, uh, actually um, uh, the medtech arena. Um, and actually, it's trying to illustrate different um, usage uh, you can make of it as a patient and as a healthcare professional. So from a patient standpoint, these um, e-health systems um, basically are, are, I would say, traditionally composed of uh, miniaturized wearable uh, sensors or, for example, um, uh, small pill containers or even sometimes implantable devices. And these uh, equipment typically communicate uh, with uh, apps that will be carrying a number of interesting functionalities for patients encompassing the management of um, alarms, uh, the monitoring of uh, the medical data, and, for example, uh, some coaching information regarding their pathology. Talking about healthcare professionals, they will have a, a counterpart for uh, this uh, app run by patient that will be composed typically of a, a number of um, um, different functionalities ranging from uh, the opportunity to remotely modify the, the treatment uh, parameters of patient or, for example, um, to uh, drive its clinical management by deciding on an hospitalization. Last but not least, all of these different elements are generally interconnected via internet um, and will be actually run in a very specific IT environment, uh, most of the time based on the remote servers or even clouds. The few slides to uh, follow. Um, will give you some interesting examples of this type of uh, e-technologies um, which are currently uh, marketed uh, under a medical device status. So the, the first one in row uh, regards volunteers, um, which is basically uh, a concept that is well into what we have just explained, since it is actually composed of um, 
basically um, an app that will be a standalone app uh, and also, a, 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 I would say, a web-based application as well um, that will allow to give some uh, directions and some uh, coaching uh, information uh, to uh, patients suffering from diabetes in response to the uh, blood glucose uh, meter uh, measurement. The next one uh, is called uh, Proteus, and this one is actually uh, also an interesting one since um, it is actually composed of centers that will be uh, miniaturized, and actually um, this uh, miniaturization allowing uh, for the sensor to fit into a, a simple PO uh, that a patient will actually uh, shallow and um, that will um, activate itself once in the stomach of the patient in the vicinity of uh, a treatment uh, that will be, uh, they will be receiving. And the signal originating from these uh, miniaturized uh, sensors will be actually detected externally by a patch and transmitted to uh, actually a mobile application. Last but not least, um, the case of uh, Chrono uh, Ferra, um, which actually is encompassing uh, a, a, a smart transdermal patch um, that will allow uh, the delivery of uh, a drug, uh, typically in that case um, a substitute for uh, nicotine, and this app uh, will allow to control the dose of that product that will be delivered to a given patient and also to provide uh, the patient with a coaching um, uh, information uh, with respect to uh, basically um, uh, you know, the, um, the smoking cessation, um, uh, I would say, purpose that is actually given to this app. Let's now move to the second part of this webinar um, and, and actually uh, let's discuss uh, a little bit uh, further uh, of the, the real tree framework that will apply uh, to this uh, EL solution. The first comment we'd like to make here is that from the moment your um, e-health technology is given a medical purpose, um, basically these products will have to um, obey uh, to rigorous um, uh, regulatory constraints. And um, the difficulty that most of the developers are currently facing is the fact that there is a perceived uh, lack of harmonization internationally when it comes to the regulation that will apply to EL solutions, um, which will find uh, uh, actually some solution in Europe uh, through the implementation of the, uh, the newly adopted uh, medical device regulation, um, but which needs some discussion for the US where developers will be confronted uh, for example, with um, different regulatory statuses uh, that do not exist in Europe, for example, um, the status of a medical device data system, or MDDS is something very um, um, specific uh, um, to the U.S. market that does not exist from an EU perspective and that might be confusing for companies. And the other uh, specificity, I would say, is the, uh, what the FDA calls enforcement discretion, where your um, e-health uh, technology um, might be regarded as a medical device by the FDA, however, um, not being proactively regulated uh, as such by the agency. Now, if we return to the situation of Europe, um, the new regulation uh, that has been, again, uh, freshly adopted um, does contain a number of very specific provisions when it comes to um, medical device uh, software and overall um, e-health solutions. And the first um, area where we, we see some reinforcement or we we'll say at least clarification based on the past um, um, directive 9342 regards um, actually the, the aspect of the um, classification uh, of these uh, um, uh, medical devices, um, where basically, um, as it can be uh, read from this uh, slide, um, to be uh, considered a medical device in Europe when you are uh, actually proposing this uh, e-health technology, 
um, you should be given to um, your, your product uh, a medical device purpose, first of all, and secondly, your uh, system uh, needs to be carrying a, a number of uh, functionalities uh, either into um, the, the performance of an action on the data you are collecting and other than just storing this data uh, for the medical benefit of an individual patient. Secondly, um, typically uh, these systems will be able to generate managed personalized alerts based on uh, monitor patient vital parameters to drive uh, clinical management. And typically this app or this um, e-health uh, uh, platform will be um, generating some sort of risk scoring as a result of that. And the last functionality that is very typical is the use of an algorithm to support facilitate medical decision by the healthcare professional. And one example of that uh, will be decision for uh, hospitalization. So when we, we, we talking about some um, evolution uh, through the new medical device regulation that will likely um, impact your uh, e-health platform, uh, the first area is the one of the classification of the product as a medical device. Since the new regulation um, is actually um, providing a number of, um, I would say, clarification and reinforcement in that domain as well, and uh, is clearly um, uh, indicating to the developers that um, basically um, the, the, the classification that the e-health product should be running under um, should be actually uh, uh, driven by a risk management approach and uh, be taking in that respect uh, into consideration the primary mode of action that is claimed for this EL solution and, of course, the clinical indication as well. So what can be seen from this definition is that um, if you are, for example, um, confronted with an EL solution that aims to um, uh, make the healthcare professional taking decisions uh, with respect to a diagnosis or even having a direct therapeutic purpose, this type of technology will be regarded as a, as a class uh, 2A. However, if that uh, EL solution uh, concerns uh, a very severe pathology that may result in the death of the patient, for example, it can be class 3. Um, and uh, as an intermediary situation, uh, if uh, this e-health uh, system is actually potentially by its, um, I would say, uh, uh, gaps and, 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 and improper uh, performance, uh, creating a risk of a serious deterioration of the state of health of the patient could be classified as a class 2B. The other thing that is also um, clarified here with that definition is the very typical situation of an app or an EL system that will intend to monitor physiological process. Um, traditionally, this app will be regarded as, as a class 2A. However, if the type of vital parameters which are measured uh, and the clinical indication overall for uh, um, the use of that app um, may result in an immediate danger to the patient, you can then uh, have as a consequence of that a net classification as a class 2B. All other software, as I as indicated uh, in that slide, would be regarded as a class 1. Now, if we try to, um, again, uh, consider carefully that provisions we can find from the new medical device regulation that will have uh, a consequence, regulatory um, uh, speaking, on your EL system, um, the case of an up classification, as we just explained uh, in the slide prior, uh, is an important one because if your, uh, for example, um, EL application evolves from a class one being self-certified up to a class 2A, for example, this will imply for you as a company the need to go through a notify body and necessarily to provision additional cost and delay until placing on the market. The aspect of traceability is also a very um, strategic topic because um, we all know that software are the object of numerous iteration and continuous development. Um, so it is obvious that um, you will have to find a way, uh, probably uh, by um, ha having your reasoning based on a risk analysis approach, 
to define the type of modification to your um, um, e-health technology that may request uh, an update to your tech file, for example, uh, under C mark or uh, a change in design approval by your notify body before it could be implemented. Last but not least, and we have additional words on that chapter later on in this webinar, uh, clinical evaluation. Um, there is um, really straightened requirements introduced uh, regarding um, uh, clinical evaluation in that new medical device regulation, which of course uh, is also concerning uh, uh, e-health product like it will be for traditional medical device. And the consequence of that will be, of course, depending on the level of impact on the patient and public health of your e-technology, a possible need to conduct a supplementary pre- or even post-market clinical trials in order to satisfy to the regulatory requirement that will actually apply to your e-health product. This slide actually intends to give you at a glance um, the situation you will be into regarding conformity assessment for the C marking of your e-health product, depending on the risk classification that will apply to your technology. Um, what we like to comment based on that slide is the fact that um, in uh, voice and consulting lab sciences experience, um, there is a frequent uh, temptation, I would say, uh, for developer uh, to regard the um, e-health uh, platform as a class one self-certified product. Um, and this very frequently occur because there is a clear lack of understanding of the regulatory obligation they should be into. And uh, I would say for them to forget that, uh, if I said before, this uh, uh, EL solution is meant to be used with a fragile patient, for example, or uh, a pathology that would be uh, very serious in, um, in impact um, on the health of these patients. Uh, it's very likely that this uh, product will have to be regarded with a, a higher class than just class one. And the other comment is the fact that as with any type of medical device, uh, there will be a need, uh, even if your product is uh, software-based, to generate a certain degree of clinical evidence in support of your CMAR process. Now, the following three slides um, are actually uh, proposing to you some sort of listing out of uh, what we think being the most important um, regulatory text um, standards and guidelines uh, providing some uh, clear direction to um, e-health developers um, in order to satisfy the regulatory requirements uh, they will have uh, to deal with um, in, in placing the um, product on the, on the European market. Um, so I won't be going by the bullet uh, in the interest of time, but what you can see when navigating uh, into this slide is the fact that all of these um, different uh, regulatory texts and standards and national guidelines um, edited by competent authorities are basically covering the entire life cycle of your EL solution, uh, going through the aspects of qualification, classification, design, validation, obviously risk management, and uh, the critical point as well of your uh, quality management system. So that list is not to be regarded as uh, fully comprehensive, but we believe uh, being already uh, pretty much uh, um, complete as such and, and we hope useful to you. Let's move into the third part of this webinar, uh, devoted to the, the steps uh, of development and evaluation of your uh, e-health technology. So we, we like to um, kick off that section by uh, asking ourselves what are the, the key challenges um, that are encountered typically in the context of an e-health development. So from the regulator, regulator uh, perspective, um, they are confronted with um, um, actually products uh, which are regarded uh, as having a very rapid development because again of the um, software, um, I would say, uh, type. Uh, without having a concomitant establishment of an adapted and even harmonized regulation. Now, from a 
companies or developer perspective, what could be said is that they have the challenge to develop, um, I would say, um, more, more, more importantly, uh, a reliable uh, e-health uh, technology um, in order to, um, in addition to the robustness of the measurement they will be doing, uh, avoid serious health consequences for patients and minimize the, the, the risks in uh, actually uh, introducing this uh, e-health technology on the market. Now, when we talk about developing an e-health solution um, that would be running under a medical device status, it is actually for us really, really uh, critical to um, basically uh, realize that the, the type and, and, and level of the regulatory evidence that will be uh, on the regulatory side um, requested to you, developers, um, will be primarily depending upon um, uh, I would say two main criteria, the first one being the intended use of your product, um, and the other one being the risk posed by your uh, e-health technology. So because of that, it is for us extremely, extremely critical from um, the very early development of your e-health solution to be extremely clear in the identification of the medical purpose and overall uh, claims you're going to be giving to your product and also to, um, I would say, in order to support and really accompany the full development of your product, do right away a rigorous productive risk analysis of your e-health uh, platform. The other key consideration for us will be, uh, as with any other type of medical device, to set up a rigorous quality management system that will fulfill the requirements of a medical device. Um, to define all the risk mitigation that you need to have in place with your product and to establish what will be the essential performance of your e-health uh, technology, including for uh, clinical performance if that is relevant to your product. Now, if we need to um, further insist on the importance of this, uh, of this aspect, um, we could, for example, illustrate the purpose by referring to um, one interesting um, survey that has been done uh, on, on last year, uh, which was actually um, covering uh, a pool of um, um, basically 2,500 healthcare professionals abroad, um, encompassing up to 13 uh, different countries, and which have been asked um, uh, about the perceived barriers uh, to the use and adoption of an e-health technology in their uh, medical practice. And what has been reported back is the fact that in up to 27% of these healthcare professionals, it was the absence of trust in reliability of data collected by these e-health technologies, which actually was seen as a, a major uh, um, stumble block in the um, integration of this e-health technology in their medical practice. Now, let's have a, a more particular view into uh, some aspects regarding the development of this e-health solution, and, and the first one being the, the, the one related to the quality in the, the design and overall development of this product. So what we like to stress is that um, you will have the need for, uh, as we said before, um, the setup of uh, a, a rigorous uh, set of quality procedures um, that will be uh, generating evidence towards an adequate validation and reliability. Um, and obviously, given the fact we're talking about the software, overall usability of your uh, product, um, these uh, QMS uh, will have to abide by the requirement of the the ISO 13485 uh, in the case of Europe uh, with a counterpart for the US through the Quality System Regulation or QSR. And the, the key stages that will have to be covered by this uh, um, QMS in terms of development and evaluation of your EL solution will uh, clearly have to uh, obviously uh, cover the aspect of design control um, because since we're talking about, again, a software-based solution, uh, there, there is obviously um, continuous improvement um, and, and, and changes to your uh, e-health platform that you need to, um, 
uh, take into account in terms of maintaining um, overall quality of this EL technology uh, uh, during the entire life cycle of your uh, EL solution. Risk management, as we said before, very important, uh, especially take into account the fact that you will have, for example, various display media. You will have to validate and take into account from a smartphone to uh, uh, basically a tablet, a PC, or other. And also the fact that if you are uh, actually um, having some models for your EOS platform that will be dealing with um, distant servers or cloud, that would be another area of potential vulnerability, I would say, of your um, e um, platform that will have to treat uh, through your risk analysis. Document record and control, again, uh, being your software in essence, uh, it, 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 it's sure you will have to go through uh, a large number of iteration until you come to a mature product and all of that should be tracked properly. And last but not least, supplier management is also very frequent uh, in that business model for EL that the actual coding of your software, at least for part of it, might be uh, subcontracted. So it's very, very important that you properly manage that uh, critical supplier to your business and you, in particular, ensure that they are fully aware of all the requirements that will be applicable to your uh, product with respect to the ISO uh, 62304 in particular. The last point, which is, again, uh, I would say uh, a manifestation of um, uh, the software uh, nature of your EL technology regards the management of complaints and safety. Um, through some post-market policies we'll have to um, establish in your QMS, um, and that will be uh, very often uh, potentially, um, uh, uh, I would say, complemented by real-world performance data collection um, in order to take into account the continuous evaluation paradigm that you will have to um, consider for your EL solution. A few words about safety now. The, the first point for us, which is really, really of importance, um, is to be able to structure uh, a very comprehensive uh, verification and validation plan as per ISO 62304 requirements, which will cover uh, all the, uh, I would say, procedures uh, to evidence the fact that the design outputs of your EL uh, solution meet the specified requirements as set by you um, as a developer. And regarding uh, validation, that um, the software specification are uh, uh, you know, consistently conform to the user needs and uh, clinical intended use of your solution. The chapter of cybersecurity is another important one to us um, because, um, uh, remember, uh, this EOS platform being very, very often uh, connected to um, a vast number of uh, medical devices and also going to a cloud or a distant server and internet, the vulnerability of this um, uh, system uh, to some, uh, uh, I would say, IT uh, cracking and cyber attack is, is, is obvious. Um, and therefore, uh, agencies like the FDA in particular is very high on the topic, and for you know, your information, you're going to be finding um, in the slide prior uh, the reference to the FDA guideline uh, on that, um, on that um, uh, I would say, topic of cybersecurity for medical device where it's very, very important for you, uh, developer of this EL solution, uh, in particular for the U.S. market, to have a very robust risk analysis approach to cybersecurity. The last bullet um, is just there for reference. We won't be saying uh, a lot of words uh, into the domain of protection of sensitive patient information because it, it's more of a legal topic than purely regulatory. But we like to make mention of it because in addition to the regulatory um, uh, procedures and um, an overall uh, uh, clearance you will have to obtain uh, either for Europe or for the US, it will be very important for you to also consider that layer of uh, uh, patient information confidentiality. And uh, we, we, we're mentioning, uh, as an example, the, the hyper privacy rules for the United States that should be your re referential in that domain uh, for any uh, EL solution you like to commercialize in the United States. Now, moving to uh, performance aspect, uh, very important one as well. 
Um, so again, as a reminder, um, when we talk about clinical performance um, and clinical evaluation, um, this is actually needed for all uh, medical devices which encompass a medical app. And the level of evidence that will be requested by the regulator will depend on the, the risks in using your uh, uh, e-health technology, um, considering primarily two uh, areas. The first one being the actual intended purpose of your e-health uh, platform, uh, whether it is used to treat, diagnose, or um, I would say more basically uh, inform uh, on clinical management will not carry the same level of risks, of course, uh, to the patient. Um, and uh, the other point being, uh, what pathology are we talking about? What disease type and the patient condition? It is obvious that if your e-health uh, platform is actually dealing with a life-threatening versus, uh, uh, I would say, a lighter uh, 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 pathology, um, uh, you know, medically speaking, with a slow progression, uh, you won't be regarded the same by the regulator and potentially the degree of clinical evidence that will be imposed on you will greatly vary on these uh, two criteria. So what are the key challenges typically encounter uh, in the clinical evaluation domain by uh, uh, e-health developers? A um, couple, of, couple of them. The first one is the fact that there is no uh, gold standard, so to say, for clinical evaluation uh, for software. The second one is, uh, again, given the nature of this technology, um, um, some misalignments uh, with software development cycle times with uh, the, 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 the cycle time of uh, what, what should be uh, a clinical investigation and, and clinical development plan of a role. And the fact that it is, again, by definition, a non-static product like uh, what we will have for a more traditional or conventional medical device. And this, obviously, is another uh, difficulty uh, to be overcome for um, finding a way to clinically evaluate and validate this uh, e-health uh, platform. So a few workarounds, again, from a return of experience. Uh, the first one is um, the fact that your pre-market clinical evidence can be uh, very often complemented by uh, post-market data, and in particular, in the domain of uh, real-world clinical evidence. Now, we like to conclude that section by um, giving you um, two extreme examples of what could be found, um, I would say, in developing your e-health technology when it comes to um, clinical evaluation expectations. Case study number one will concern the situation of an online app um, um, technology that will have as a main um, purpose to calculate a clinical store, score. I mean, we could take an example of the, um, the, the Glasgow uh, score, for example, um, in order to uh, uh, better uh, evaluate, um, um, you know, whether a patient is actually, um, uh, you know, in, in a deep sedation and conscious or not. Um, given the, um, the, 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 the surgical procedure or whatever medical procedure he has to go through. Um, in that situation, uh, since we're talking about uh, an app uh, or an e-health platform that will be calculating a clinical score that is very commonly used by uh, healthcare professionals in their practice, this type of uh, e-health uh, uh, solution is likely to be primarily the object of a so-called analytical validation uh, which primarily will be there uh, as a way to demonstrate that this um, uh, uh, software and overall e uh, uh, technology is able to accurately and reliably generate uh, the intended output uh, from the input data received in terms of reproducibility, repeatability, etc. Um, it's actually important to note that this type of requirement is anyway already part of uh, the requirements coming from the ISO 62304, and therefore should be already part of the overall qualification you've made of your EL solution if you properly abide by all the uh, proper provisions of that standard. The second situation, which is a lot more extreme, is the one of a medical app that will be assessing the risk of a life-threatening uh, disease. Uh, we could take an example in dermatology with, for example, an app that will be calculating a score with respect to uh, melanoma. 
that may develop uh, in a given patient. This type of uh, uh, e-health solution is very likely, on the contrary to the first one, to be the object of both a scientific validation and also uh, a clinical study to establish the clinical performance and demonstrate them uh, through this uh, clinical trial uh, with the idea to establish how well the output of this app uh, uh, accurately correlates to the intended clinical healthcare situation of this patient in the dermatological uh, domain for this particular example, and to show evidence of the ability of this uh, uh, EL solution to yield a clinically meaningful output uh, in, in that case uh, with respect to a diagnosis purpose. So we're going to be uh, wrapping up now and uh, finishing with uh, a few take-home messages. So the first one we like to uh, emphasize is the fact that an e-health product is not, definitely not, um, a standard IT technology that could be used with a, a medical purpose. But on the contrary to that, it is to be regarded as any other medical device uh, from the point of view of the medical qualification. And uh, it means that you need to be very clear on your e-health product functionalities, targeted clinical indication, and safety performance claims. And the other aspect being the product development and evaluation that needs to really abide by the principle of the ISO 62304 and cover the entire product life cycle in terms of design, VNV, and all critical aspects. Last but not least, um, there are really a trend for more streams and regulatory landscape ahead. Uh, both for Europe with the implementation of the medical device regulation, as we said before, in particular in the domain of the clinical evidence, um, and for the USA where, uh, as said before, uh, there is a trend for uh, an enlargement of uh, the FDA radar when it comes to uh, ER technology that would be more and more uh, being an object of um, a proactive regulatory review by the US agency before being placed on the U.S. market. Thank you, Christophe, for this explanation, e-health technologies in medical device. Thank you for your time. Of course, you may contact the LNE directory for more information. Moving on, don't forget our other webinar and events. Upcoming events, Intermeditech Fair, it's in Paris, in May, 16 to 18 May. MD and EVD Medical Forum, accreditation and webinar in medical sector. In uh, and uh, training courses, 10 English training courses for medical device manufacturers, the essential normative and regulatory aspect of the security of information systems in medical sector, and medical device software life cycle processes, European regulation on medical devices, It's in an uh, essential normative and regulatory aspect of the security of information system in medical. This webinar is now coming to hand. Thank you very much for attending. And Christophe, thank you very much for your input. It's now time to end this webinar. We hope it met your expectations and that we will see you again in our other events or at your location. Feel free to contact us on the details displayed on this slide. Thank you again and have a nice day and see you soon. Thank you very much. Bye.